Okay, so in this video we are going to discuss uh, the Minkowski's inequality. So, Minkowski's inequality. And this is the inequality that we have been building up to. This is the reason we derived Holder's inequality, um, uh, because we want Minkowski's inequality. And Minkowski's inequality is going to help us prove uh, that uh, LP spaces are indeed metric spaces with the uh, metric function uh, that we defined in previous videos. Okay, uh, so uh, Minkowski's inequality uh, is that uh, the, um, the sum from i is equal to, actually I should set the scene first, uh, so let x and y both be elements of some LP space, uh, and uh, x uh, therefore is equal to some sequence x1, x2, x3, all the way on, and y is also equal to some sequence y1, uh, y2, uh, etc. Okay, uh, so they are LP uh, They are elements of this LP space where P is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Okay, uh, so uh, Minkowski's inequality states that the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of xi uh, plus yi, the modulus of xi plus yi, uh, to the power of P uh, divided by 1 over P is less than or equal to uh, the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity the modulus of xi to the p to the power of 1 over p plus uh, the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity the modulus of yi to the power of p uh, to the power of 1 over p. So this great big inequality is Minkowski's inequality. inequality. And uh, this works for any two uh, any two uh, sequences which are elements of this LP space. Okay, uh, so let's prove it now. So the proof. So uh, the first thing is that I can't even at the moment um, I can't prove that this new sequence, if we define x plus y as being x one plus y one, x two plus y two, x three plus y3. I can't even prove at the moment that that is an LP, that, you know, x plus y is an element of LP. Uh, but, uh, note, if I prove uh, this inequality, uh, then I do indeed uh, prove that this, uh, that, this, that this vector is an element of LP. Uh, because, you know, uh, if x is an element of LP, uh, then it, then it uh, implies that, uh, that the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of xi to the power of p is some finite value. Therefore, when I take 1 over p, uh, well, I take it to the power of 1 over p, uh, that's still some finite positive real number, uh, well, non-negative real number, because it could be equal to 0. And uh, again, if the summation from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of yi to the power of p um, is finite because y is an element of LP, so y is an element of LP too, uh, implies that this is finite, uh, so uh, 1 over p is still finite, so when we add these two together we get some uh, non-negative finite real number, so uh, this uh, this sequence x plus p, x plus y, would therefore be an element of LP because if uh, this uh, if this whole thing is finite, uh, then if I do it to the power of p, so if I uh, say uh, take this and do it to the power of p, I will get the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of xi plus y just to the power of p, i.e. without the 1 over p here, and uh, basically uh, if uh, if the whole thing to the power of 1 over p is finite, it implies that the inner thing is also finite. Okay, uh, so if I can prove this inequality, then I prove also that x plus y is an element of LP. Okay, so the first thing to say is that if I uh, look at the sequence, the sum from i is equal to 1 to some finite value m of the modulus of xi plus yi to the power of p, then this is equal to the summation from i is equal to 1 to m, the modulus of xi plus yi, times the modulus of xi plus yi, to the power of p. Nothing, p minus 1, sorry. Uh, nothing special there. I've just pulled a single one of them out. Uh, so now uh, we use the fact that xi plus y, the modulus of that, is less than or equal to the modulus of xi plus the modulus of yi. So I can now say that uh, this summation, the sum from i is equal to 1 to n of the modulus of xi plus yi uh, to the power of p is less than or equal to the sum 
from i is equal to 1 to n of the modulus of xi plus the modulus of yi times the modulus of xi plus yi to the power of p minus 1. And that works because uh, we know that all of these are positive real numbers and uh, therefore uh, the fact that each one of these, um, the fact that, um, so basically this is going to imply uh, that uh, xi uh, plus yi um, to the power of p is going to be less than or equal to the modulus of xi uh, plus the modulus of yi uh, times the modulus of xi uh, plus the modulus of y uh, plus yi to the power of p minus one. So basically, this being true implies that this is true because all I've done is multiply multiply both sides uh, by xi plus y to the power of um, p and um, p minus one. So uh, providing uh, because uh, that is a positive number. Uh, the inequality sign does not flip. So, uh, because xi plus y to the power, uh, the modulus of that to the power of p minus 1 is a positive number, I can multiply both sides of this inequality and get this inequality here. And then this basically implies this that if I sum over i is equal to 1 to n, since this inequality is true for all i is an element of the natural numbers, I can then sum from i is equal to 1 to n, and it will still hold true because uh, you could prove that by induction basically. Uh, all of these are going to be less than the corresponding term that you're adding on here. So if you wrote this out as x1 plus y1 to the power of p, and then uh, on this side the corresponding term is the modulus of x1 plus the modulus of y1 uh, to the times uh, the modulus of x1 plus y1 to the power of p minus 1, and then uh, on this side we'll then add on x2 plus y2 uh, to the power of p, and then on this side we'll add on x1 uh, plus y, uh, sorry, x2 plus y2, mod, the modulus of y2 times the modulus of x2 plus y2 to the power of p minus 1. And basically, we know that this individual term here is less than or equal to this, so then when we add this on, uh, we also know that this one is less than or equal to this one, so the sum of those two together must be less than or equal to the sum of these two, and we can go on like that and add on arbitrarily many terms up to n, uh, some uh, finite number n, and uh, this inequality is still going to hold. So that's where we've got to so far. We have this inequality here. So I'll just circle it. Right, now what we need to discuss is we need to go back to Holder's inequality. Uh, well, actually, firstly, we can uh, we can develop this one, we can take this one more step along, which is that the sum from i is equal to 1 to n of the modulus of xi plus yi uh, to the power of p um, is less than or equal to, let's split this up into two summations, the sum from i is equal to 1 to n of the modulus of xi times the modulus of xi plus yi to the power of p minus 1 plus the summation i is equal to 1 to n the modulus of yi times the modulus of xi plus yi to the p minus 1. And basically, what we want to now do is apply Holder's inequality to these summations. Uh, but before we can do that, we need to have a bit of a discussion about Holder's inequality. Because what we derived for Holder's inequality, the summations here were infinite. They weren't finite. So we need to discuss why, the Holder, why Holder's inequality also holds true for finite sums as well. Uh, so Holder's inequality stated that if... Um, if we have two sequences, and I want to call them something different from x and y because we're using x and y in this. So let's say a and b. So a is equal to a1, a2, a3, uh, a4, etc. And b is equal to a1, uh, sorry, not a, b1, uh, b2, b3, etc. Uh, so those are two sequences, and b is an element of L. Now we need some different symbols because we're using p up here, so I want some new ones. So we'll say u and v. So let's say a is an element of L u, where u is now taking the place of the symbol that we used before was p. But remember, it's just some number from 1, 2, 3, 4. It's just some natural number. And we're using v in the place of q. So uh, we know that u and v are conjugate, uh, well, v is the conjugate exponent of u. So 1 over u plus 1 over v is equal to uh, 1, and we know that u is greater than 1. Uh, we know that if that's the case, uh, then 
uh, the summation i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of ai bi is less than or equal to the summation j is equal to 1 to infinity uh, the uh, modulus of ai uh, to the power of uh, p to the 1 over p times the summation k is equal to 1 to infinity the modulus of bk to the power of q over to the power of 1 over q. Okay, so that's what we... Uh, so, oh, there, oh dear, I have um, not been concentrating. We were letting u take the place of p, so I should replace these with u here. And uh, these need to be replaced with v, because v was taking the place of q. Right, okay, so another piece of paper. Yeah. Okay, so that is Holter's inequality, which we derived in the previous video, uh, just with different symbols. We're just using different symbols to note the exact same thing uh, that we had in the previous videos. Okay, so we'd like to apply Holder's inequality to these products here, uh, i.e. we want them to take the place of these, uh, but these are finite summations, so we need to discuss why this is going to work, even if these are finite. And the reason is, that you can imagine take letting, let's let a bar just equal the vector a1, a2, all the way up to a n, and then just define the rest of the terms to be equal to zero, 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 zero. So let's um, let all the pre let next terms be equal to zero, and let, let's let b bar equal uh, b1, uh, b2, uh, b3, um, all the way up to uh, b n, and then that's the that's that the next terms all be equal to zero, so it goes on and on and on with zeros. Then, if we look at these summations here, uh, then on this side, uh, this is uh, the summation i is equal to one to infinity of the modulus of a i b i. You means uh, you're going to add up a one b one plus a two b two plus all the way up to a n b n. And then you're going to continue on, of course, because this goes on forever. So you're going to get AM plus 1 times BM plus 1, etc., etc. But all the terms after this, AM plus 1 is equal to 0, and BM plus 1 is equal to 0. So all of these terms are just going to be equal to 0. So this is, in fact, going to just equal the sum from I is equal to 1 to N of uh, the modulus of AI, BI. Okay? And this term here, if we uh, look at this one, uh, so I'll just move the paper up a bit. Uh, okay, so uh, the next term, if we look at the summation j is equal to 1 to infinity, the modulus of ai uh, to the u, all to the power of 1 over u, that is equal to, uh, oh, well, it's, uh, let's just look at the summation for now, well, it's going to be all to the power of 1 over u, uh, but the summation is going to be uh, a1 to the power of u, plus the modulus of a2 to the power of u, plus etc. on all the way up to a n to the power of u, but then we will go on and we'll get plus a n plus 1 to the power of u, but all the terms after this are equal to 0. So this is in fact just equal to uh, the summation, uh, well it's equal to the uh, summation i is equal to 1 to n of the modulus of a i to the power of n, uh, not to the power of n, to the power of u over 1 over the power, to the power of 1 over u. Okay, so let's get rid of that for the moment. Uh, so bring this up. Uh, so we get that uh, this uh, infinite, sequ infinite series here is in fact just equal to this finite series here. And then similarly, we get uh, that the infinite sum k is equal to 1 to infinity of bk. Oh, and this should have been aj here. I do apologise that it was summed over j, and I've written uh, i there. So uh, we're just so that we don't confuse our indexes when we put it all back together in Holder's inequality. Uh, let's leave these as j. Uh, so uh, modulus of bk to the power of v this time, to the power of 1 over v. Again, it's going to be similar to in this case, and we'll get the modulus of b1 to the power of v, plus the modulus of b2 to the power of v, and it will go on all the way up to the modulus of bn to the power of v, and then you'll go on, surpass that, plus the bn plus 1 to the power of v, and then you'll go on for, for count of the infinitely many terms, and then do that to the power of 1 over v. But all of the terms after that will just equal 0. So this, in fact, is going to converge on uh, the exact same uh, thing as you got to by the nth term. So it's going to be the sum from k is equal to 1 to n of the modulus of bk uh, to the power of v 
over to the power of 1 over v. Okay, uh, so therefore, putting this all back together in Holder's inequality, we get that the summation i is equal to 1 to n of the modulus of ai uh, bi uh, is less than or equal to the summation k is equal to 1 to uh, n, the modulus of a, oh sorry, this should have been j, j is equal to 1 to n, uh, the modulus of aj to the power of u, to the power of 1 over u, times the summation k is equal to 1 to n, the modulus of bk to the power of v, uh, to the power of 1 over v. Okay, uh, so now what we can do is we can view a i and b i as just being these finite vectors. We can view a as being a1, a2, all the way up to a n. And this summation is still true. You, yes, okay, to prove it, we had to uh, think about extending it into a vector in L, LP or whatever. Uh, but or L U rather in this case, uh, i.e. an infinite vector, an infinite sequence, or an inf infinite sequence if you like, uh, rather we're dealing with finite sequences, sorry, uh, rather than vectors at the moment. We haven't discussed uh, these spaces as vector spaces yet. Um, but you could think of it as a finite sequence, and B you could think of as a finite sequence as well. So Holder's inequality works perfectly well for these finite sequences because you can just think of them as infinite sequences where the rest of the terms are all zeros after that. Uh, so Holder's inequality does in fact work for the finite case as well as the infinite case. Okay, uh, so now uh, we must note, however, that u had to be greater than 1, and 1 over u plus 1 over v had to be equal uh, to 1. I, they had to be conjugate the exponential for this, uh, they, had to be, uh, they had to be conjugate exponents for this inequality here to hold. Okay, uh, so let's go back to the problem that we were trying to solve in Minkowski's uh, inequality, which is we were trying to uh, use Holder's inequality uh, to the, uh, apply it to these sums here. Okay, uh, so now let's do that, and um, what we're going to do is we're going to, um, we're going to, uh, so if we look at this formula here for the finite case of Holder's inequality, um, in fact actually we will uh, take a break here and we will continue this discussion in the next video.